Okay, so we have a central force, and we uh, evaluated the velocity, r dot, r vector dot, in uh, polar coordinates as r dot, r hat, plus r theta dot, theta hat. And we can write the Lagrangian as uh, one-half times this... Um, reduced mass, I think it's called, that we had there, um, r dot squared plus r squared theta dot squared minus the central potential. And, of course, we have a p theta, a uh, theta momentum, which is dl by d theta dot, which is... Uh, a constant uh, due to the fact that dl by d theta is zero, right? There's no theta. There's no direct theta dependence there. So we have a p theta. That's a theta, uh, which in this case is mu r squared theta dot. That's the constant, right? That's the constant. Um, so notice that if we just focus on this part, we can see that we have a, uh, so d by dt, this is a constant, then we have d by dt of r squared theta dot must be equal to zero. Um, but this is an area, this is an area uh, or it's, a, it's an infinitesimal area, uh, one-half um, r. So I'm thinking of, uh, let's see, I'll write this r squared as r times r d theta, right? Uh, where two sides are r and r d theta, so we have an r and we have an r d theta where uh, this is d theta with angle, an infinitesimal angle d theta, and this whole thing here is uh, the infinitesimal uh, area uh, that has been um, covered in the time dt. So we have dA, the rate of change, dA dt of that area is one half r squared d theta by dt, um, which is the constant that we're looking at here. And of course, this is Kepler's second law, uh, which uh, we saw in the, we derived this in a different way, I think, in the astrophysics course.